but let's talk about back pain today. Uh, there's so much to talk about arching of the back, how arching is bad, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you have been following my work, I'm sure that you know how I feel about that, and I will explain why today. So, it is a very common uh, thing to say that if we have too much extension in the back, that will cause back pain, okay? But what does the research say? First of all, we know that 99.999999% of all disc herniations are protruding, in fact, posteriorly. Okay. And research is showing that this is caused by flexion of the spine. And let us consider that logically. Why is that? Well, because if we push on the anterior side of the disc, the pressure will push the nucleus, the core of the disc, backwards. Okay, and eventually it is able to migrate through the annulus and the disc will rupture. Now, my friends, my dear friends, it is impossible for the nucleus to track posteriorly if we are in extension. Consider that for a second. If the pressure is on the posterior side of the disc, the nucleus will track forward, right? How often do we see? A disc herniation post anteriorly, sorry, in people with low back pain. Let that sink in for a moment. We never see that, right? No, we never see that. We always see it protruding posteriorly, and that can only be caused by spinal flexion. Furthermore, we have studies, uh, of course, showing reduced lumbar uh, extension, a loss of lordotic curvature. We have studies uh, correlating and associating reduced sacral alignment, reduced sacral angle uh, in relation to people with high risk, uh, high correlation to this degeneration. And of course, this is because when the sacrum comes down, we will have more anterior, anterior pressure compression on the L5-S1 disc. Okay. Furthermore, we have a lot of studies showing that the muscles that extend the spine degenerate in people who have these kind of disorders. If we had too much extension, would it not be logical that the flexors were atrophying? But that's not what we see, is it? No. We see a nucleus popping out posteriorly. We see atrophy of the spinal extensors, the psoas, the QL, the multifidae director spine, right? So all the evidence and all common sense is pointing towards a lack of extension as the cause of these discogenic issues. So then why are people claiming that there is a hyperextension as the cause? Well, first of all, I, I, I'm sad to say it, but I think it's the lack of critical thinking. Sorry, guys, that's just my opinion. And I've been doing a lot of errors here myself, just to be honest with you all doing a lot of errors, but you know, when patients are not getting better, we have to try something else, right? We cannot just keep doing the same, 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 and expect a different uh, outcome. According to Einstein, that is the definition of madness now, isn't it? Okay. So, why then do so many people, especially therapists, think, and honestly, patients also, why do they think they have too much extension? Here is why, guys, okay? So, they are tucking the pelvis in, causing that lumbosacral flexion. And where do we always see the injuries? In the lumbosacral area, right? So it is related to the pelvis. So they tuck the pelvis and they hinge on the thoracolumbar junction. So we see a hyperextension in the middle back and a flexion in the lower back, which is why the patient comes in, you can see a hyperextension Yet the MRI shows a loss of lordotic curvature, right? It is a paradox. You see the hyperextension, they get pain when they go into extension. Well, it has to be hyperextension that is the cause. No. They are in pelvic flexion. So the cure is to get that pelvis back to circumferentially load the disc once again, and the disc can heal. If we keep having this excessive anterior pressure, this anterior compressive force on the disc, it cannot heal. 
this is why some guys, you know, so many patients that had a disc herniation 30 years ago and they are still in pain. Come on guys, it's not the disc herniation. It's the cause. The cause is still there. They're standing the same way. They're loading their backs the same way. My wife, for example, she was in a, in a car crash. Three disc herniations in the cervical spine. She was fine six months later. So is the disc herniation a problem? Or is the cause of the disc herniation still there? Okay? So this video uh, is becoming a little longer than I expected. I think I got my point across. I think that we do need to establish a proper lumbosacral curvature once again. Uh, this can be painful for the patient because although flexion is causing flexion is causing that posterior wound on the disc. So flexion is the cause. When you go into extension, you're pushing on that wound. But this is harmless, guys. It hurts a little, yes. It is harmless. So when this is the paradox once again. When they are in flexion, it feels better, but it is the cause of the problem. When they go into extension, it hurts because of the pressure on the wound, but this is the solution, okay? I hope this was informative. Uh, I have surely done a lot of mistakes uh, treating this issue, okay? So please don't feel like I'm pointing the finger towards you if you have been doing this. Uh, I'm really not trying to do that. Rather, I'm trying to inform about this issue. And one more thing, if you would like to have a measurement for the pelvis, do not measure the ASIS to PSIS uh, horizontally, because if you align those landmarks, you will put them in a posterior pelvic tilt. It does absolutely not represent neutral. If you want a neutral pelvic alignment, have the patient to upright, you find the pubic symphysis, the ASIS, and you align it vertically. So when the, uh, the pubic symphysis is aligned with the ASIS vertically, it should never be in front, I will allow it to be a little bit in the back, and that's a pretty good pelvic alignment. And moreover, you can ensure that the lumbar extensors are mildly active in posture. Okay. So, uh, I think I'm finished now. That's a long talk. Sorry about that. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. I wish you all a nice day.